Greetings, pen pals. Um, so uh, this is a big event for me, at least, because a lot of us in the pen community have been waiting quite a long time to see this pen. So for many, many months uh, and many, many delays, uh, we've been waiting to see the Platinum Curidas. So for many of us, sort of Platinum's marketing materials was all we had to go on. So it was going to be a um, capless, retractable pen very much, at least uh, thematically, if you will, like the um, uh, Pilot Vanishing Point. We'll get to that comparison in a minute. Um, they showed it coming in um, uh, five different colors, uh, three different um, nib widths, extra fine, fine, and medium, and um, all sorts of interesting um, uh, materials about the mechanism, which looked interesting and somewhat complex. Um, a lot of brags about how long it would last without drying out, etc. And then there were pictures, etc. But we didn't have a lot to go on in terms of a lot of interesting questions, uh, in terms of materials, build quality, just what this would be like from an actual writing experience, etc. So it was supposed to originally come out in early February. That was then pushed to late February, which was then pushed to mid-March, which was then pushed to mid-April, and that has finally arrived, and the pen is finally here. So without any further ado, this is the pen. This is the Platinum Curidas. This one is in the graphite finish, and it's in a medium nib. So to answer some of the questions about build quality, so one of the things I wondered about, was it going to be, and because of just the way it looked, at least in the pictures, I was concerned that what we're going to get in terms of materials and build quality would be something like the Platinum Preppy. So this type of plastic material, uh, the similar type of uh, nib uh, and writing experience on the Platinum Preppy, etc. Um, I would have been really pleasantly surprised if what we got was something a lot more like the Platinum 3776 Century. Although this has a gold nib, obviously we know we weren't getting a gold nib, so maybe something like, forgetting about the fact that it's a gold nib, but just sort of overall materials and build quality of, of something like this. That would have really been awesome. Um, from a price point perspective, this pen had a curious price history. The suggested retail price was and still is $80. That was $80 without a converter. That's how it was originally announced. A lot of retailers started applying their normal discounts to it and were selling it for $64. I actually got a pre-order in for $64. So, however, Platinum then did a couple of things. One, they basically told the retailers they weren't allowed to discount it. So the discounts all went away. The retailer I ordered from did honor my pre-order price, so I did pay the $64. But they said, no discounting this pen. So... You have to pay the $80 from an authorized retailer. But they did add the converter. So it was originally $64 without a converter, $80 with the converter. So obviously the converter is not worth $16, but the question is, is this pen worth $80? So are you, would, would the big question I was wondering is, am I paying $80 for a pen that's of build quality similar to the Preppy, or am I getting something similar in build quality to the 3776 Century? The answer was neither. What we actually got was something, I believe, in similar build quality to this, which is a Platinum Cool. This is a pen that I believe goes for about $60. It's a steel nib platinum pen. I believe, in my opinion, the nib uh, on, the, on the Cool um, is of similar quality to the nib on the uh, Curidas. Obviously not the same nib, but sort of in the same family, if you will, and I believe the overall build quality and the materials are much similar to that on the Cool. As a matter of fact, if you look at this threading unit here on the Cool, it is basically identical, uh, not in size, but in every other aspect to the threading unit on the Curidas. So uh, what I, I believe from a materials and build quality standpoint, uh, if you've got anybody out there who's familiar with the Platinum Cool, this is essentially the the class of pen that you are getting with the Curidas. You're getting something better than the Preppy. You're getting something not as good as the 3776 Century. So fair enough on all that aspects. Now, let's get to this pen. 
So as we said, this is a um, uh, retractable nib pen. So immediately when we talk about capless retractable nib pens, the thing that immediately comes to mind and is absolutely must have comparison would be comparing to this, which is a pilot vanishing point. So as you can see, um, uh, un, unextended, the Curidas is considerably longer, mainly because this push button is just massive. It's nearly twice the size as the push button on the um, uh, vanishing point. However, an interesting thing happens when you extend the point. So we'll extend the point on the vanishing point, we'll extend the point on the Curidas, and you see that that button goes way down. And what you end up with is two pens that are literally the exact same length that it cannot be a coincidence by any means. So that is what you're getting here. So let's look at it um, unextended, if you will, for some size comparisons and to compare it with some other pens that you might be familiar with. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see in its in its unextended state, the Curidas is quite a long pen. And again, it's just that button is just very, very long. Um, so uh, it, the weight of this pen is um, is 29 grams. So it's not a particularly light pen. Uh, that's with the converter and full of ink is 29 grams. And that's also with the clip, which in the clip is removable. And we we'll get to that in a bit. So this, you, you do have to push this all the way down in order to get it to, to catch. So there's nothing, no get around that. So the, 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 the throw on the action of this pen is just the longest of any pen I've ever seen. You're just gonna have to get used to it. Compare it to the vanishing point, which is a fraction of that. Um, in terms of just the overall feel of the action, it's actually quite good um, um, compared to two of them. I think the, the actual um, tactile experience is very good and the clicking sound etc i'm actually quite fond of it's definitely louder and there's more going on it seems like on the curidas and the vanishing point which is mostly metal you would think would be louder but i actually think it's a bit louder on the um on the on the curidas um in terms of just aesthetics of this thing it's just it's a little bit of an odd beast, I have to say. So you have, a lot of people have objected to this little fin on the bottom. Um, prob, part of the problem is uh, um, when, um, you know, when, that's sort of necessary. So there's a, a little part of the door opening mechanism that extends into that fin. I'm guessing this was very deliberately engineered and there was no way around that. The maw on the end is quite quite large uh, compare comparing it to the vanishing point the vanishing point has sort of a much much smaller hole you could actually see the little trap door open on the curidas to um uh to extend uh the nib etc speaking of nib extension let's take a look at that so one thing people might like on the curidas versus the vanishing point is it's a much bigger nib and much more the nib is sort of visible and and sort of present outside of the pen so it's just a massive massive size difference this is very close to a conventionally sized nib i mean it's not like a number five or anything like that but it's it's definitely close to a recognizable small fountain pen nib this is just a microscopic little thing um which a lot of people just don't 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 like um um you know but uh, so that that definitely is something that um that uh, some people might uh, like another thing people might like is the fact that the clip is removable the clip people object very often to the vanishing point because you kind of have to hold it like this and the clip is in the way if you leave the clip on the curidas you're in the pretty much the same boat although the clip is set quite a bit further back on the pen so you do kind of have the option of holding it kind of like this and the clip is mostly out of the way because the clip as you can see is definitely further back on the pen than it is on the vanishing point um i'm sorry guys but i'm going to be comparing this to the vanishing point a lot in this video so if that bothers you i'm sorry but it's really you know it's it's sort of required for a it's it's sort of required for a a video such as this um 
And as we'll get a little later to the fact that the clip, like I said, is um, is removable. Um, talking about the parts on this pen, um, where do we even begin? So outside aesthetically, you're basically dealing with uh, a single color a material across the whole pen, the both the push button, the uh, the, the the barrel, both sections of the barrel, it, it, etc. Um, it's smooth material. The only thing that sort of you know, would impact you that you can actually feel is this ring between the two sections of the barrel, the clip itself, and this, like I said, this little divot here. Now, if you were to take the clip off, there's some other little bits of plastic that help hold the clip on that we'll get to in a minute um, when you when we take uh, when we take the clip off. The branding says Curidas and sort of a uh, a 1970s style sci-fi font. That's about the best way I could um, I can describe that. And it says Platinum made in Japan. Um, uh, on the uh, um, on the uh, right above uh, the the split between the sec between this between the barrel and the section, um, and that's really it from a branding uh, from a branding per uh, perspective. And the clip itself is is a nice functional clip. Um, it's a short clip, and it's even shorter than it actually looks because th there's a bit of plastic that holds the clip on that actually intrudes into the actual usable part of the clip. So the actual usable part of the clip is about, um, let's say about a quarter less, it takes about, uh, it's about a quarter less than visually it would seem to be. So it is a, it's quite a short clip, but it does work and it works uh, functionally, uh, functionally quite uh, well. Um, and like I said, you do have this cool sort of trap door mechanism that just looks really interesting. I mean, you, that similar kind of thing is actually going on inside the vanishing point, but it's really hard to see. This, they make no bones about trying to hide it. If they wanted to hide this, they would have made this opaque and all sorts of stuff like that, but they didn't. Um, they really want you to see that, which I think is part of the cool part of the of this pen. And this seems to work really well. Like I said, the action is really satisfying. Although, like I said, this throw is just crazy big. I've never seen a writing instrument of any kind with a throw like that. That's just, that is just monstrous um absolutely monstrous let's talk a little bit about the packaging of this pen shall we so it comes in this very very nice box um super nice box actually this is a very premium um piece of packaging that i could see i mean more than a $80. I mean, to be honest with you, I think this is slightly nicer packaging than even an $80 pen you would expect to see. This is, this is, I think, very premium packaging. Just looks great and classy. It says Platinum Japan 1919. Has sort of a stylized image of the pen here, not a literal one. And it says Curidas, again, in this sort of 1970s sci-fi kind of font. Has some, um, you know, just uh, uh, business material there has a particular as a sticker which has the particular model number of the pen on the side and that's it and it slides out uh, from this outer uh, sleeve to reveal the inner box again this is a plastic box hinged box very nice it says platinum japan 1919 um, and the pen is in a pen bed you open up the pen bed and below it you're going to get a standard platinum converter you get a nice little instruction booklet you get one platinum uh, ink cartridge. Um, this pen did have a um, a hang tag on on the clip, and uh, it does have this little tool to remove the clip. And um, let's talk about how that works right uh, right now. So to remove the clip, not all that complicated. You has a little directional arrow on this tool. You put the tool on. Um, in front of the clip, you push, you push a little bit, and then you sort of slide to the right, and the clip will just come right out. There you go. To put the clip, um, to put the clip, uh, well, before we put the clip back, let's take a look at this without the clip. So you do have, the problem is, you have two little plastic nubs here, and you have a little nub here where the clip, uh, at the, where the top of the clip uh, goes. So part of the issue is, you're you're not really getting that totally smooth effect you still have stuff that's going to interfere with your fingers uh without the clip so it, they're really trying very hard to mitigate a major objection that people have with the vanishing point but i just don't think this was 
thought through really well. I think this could have been done done a bit uh, better. In any case, um, to uh, we're going to put the um, we're going to put the clip uh, we'll put the clip back on now. And um, to uh, to do that, you simply uh, engage the clip under the 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 top part um, uh, uh, here. Um, and um, again, using the little uh, uh, tool, oops, using the little tool, you simply push the clip back into place. So it's not it's not a it's not a complicated operation to take and remove the clip, but it's just the question is I think they went into an awful lot of trouble, including including providing this little tool to sort of engineer that feature. Um, and I'm not sure the payoff uh, was really uh, worth it because I don't think most people who really dislike the clip are really going to be satisfied with the end result of what you end up getting um, without the clip. Um, wow. So that's the Platinum Curidas. Um, oh, wait a minute. That is not the Platinum Curidas. One thing I didn't talk about was how the insides of this uh, work. So um, let's zoom in a little bit here. Um, Let's uh, so you unscrew the barrel, and then you've got uh, when you unscrew the barrel, um, you get uh, kind of a uh, this the the, the the all the spring action is kind of gone from the from the from the from the button. Um, you then have to kind of remove the 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 business part of the pen, and you can see this little U-shaped channel here with a pin in it. So what you're going to do is push and follow along that U-shaped channel until this whole business comes out. Uh, to remove this, there's a shroud then that goes over either the cartridge or the converter. I'm not going to remove, well, now I can actually remove that shroud. So you see there's another similar channel there. So again, you're going to do the same business there. That's an L-shaped channel. You're going to navigate that pin through the channel, and this sort of cover uh, goes on, uh, covers the converter or cartridge, which would be, which would be there. So uh, again, to reverse the process, you uh, navigate through that L-shaped channel, um, put this back through the spring, navigate that pin to back through that U-shaped channel, and you're back in a business. And then you can screw this back on. So that's sort of the, the, how the guts of this pen work. Well, now that we've seen how the guts of it work, let's talk about how it writes. I'm sure you want to see how it writes, and you're going to see that right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a uh, platinum curidas and this has a medium steel nib and um, I think this writes great it is smooth it is wet um, uh, I just think it writes really, really well. Um, yeah, has really nice flow, etc. Um, now, in terms of comfort, like I said, I personally, I know I don't mind even on the pilot vanishing point uh, uh, having the the clip. Yeah, here. So this is that's never been a problem for me. If it is for you, you have a couple options. You could remo try removing the clip and see if that helps, or you do have this area in the front if you grip it a little forward of the clip, which is an option you don't have on the vanishing point. To me, much more objectionable than the clip is this little fin at the bottom. It's definitely my finger definitely hits that. It definitely takes a little getting used to. It's not a deal breaker by any means. I find that a little annoying because you're definitely not used to having stuff on the bottom of a pen there sticking out like that. That's just super, super unusual um, for any kind of writing instrument. So uh, to me, that's that's more objectionable than anything the clip could possibly do. Um, but there you go. So I think this is a, a, this is just a nice writer. Um, I think this is a nice pen. Now, the question that people asked is, is there a point to this pen? Does it have a place in the marketplace? Given that this exists and has existed for years and is very, very successful, is there any point to introducing this? I'm going to say yes. One, it's half the price. Two, it they will have the opportunity to have this in different plastics and colors and materials and finishes, which I think will look really nice. I think the mechanism is cool. Um, 
a little bit cooler than this in the fact because this is sort of more of a quiet understated kind of thing you don't really see what's going on whereas this you can see in all its glory um, uh, how the mechanism works um, it remains to be seen obviously how successful this is I personally think it will be but you know we shall see it also remains to be seen how robust this is if these really start breaking after six months then they're gonna have a problem on their hands um, but if this turns to be is uh, turns out to be a robust mechanism that works well I think they may have a very very successful um, successful pen uh, on their hands but we shall see I like it I think it's worth the 80 bucks uh, including the converter um, um, but let's uh, see what uh, happens are they going to offer this in premium materials with a gold nib that also remains to be seen so we'll see we'll, we will see what happens but i definitely like it this is definitely a thumbs up review for me and um, i think it's a worthwhile pen and I'm, it was was it worth the wait yeah probably um anyway that's certainly enough about this pen let's talk about this ink now for a minute shall we okay folks this is one of the standard inks from diamine this is diamine graphite not one of the special editions or anything like that but a great great ink from uh diamine so um uh, this um, this is one of those inks that goes on and dries a bit differently. So it looks very black when it goes on, but um, once it dries, it uh, starts to uh, pick up that graphite color and gets uh, gets some shading and stuff like that. So uh, again, it goes on pretty black, dries into sort of this graphite gray with some shading. So it looks. Uh, Looks pretty nice, nice ink, um, and uh, um, again, is looks like what it's supposed to be. Definitely looks like graphite, kind of almost like a somewhat like a pencil lead kind of uh, kind of graphite uh, color, um, and uh, just otherwise a a nice nice looking uh, ink all around that I've um, always been quite uh, pleased with. Um, I, I use this in lots of different pens. Um, um, I don't have a lot of gray inks. Um, some of my favorite gray inks are some of Rosh Zuku inks that I'm always a little afraid to use in maybe vintage pens, etc. But this one I would definitely use in sort of in any, in pretty much any pen. Um, great, great ink. Um, that's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, so this is Diamine. Graphite. And this is on Tomoe River paper. And uh, again, nice, nice uh, color. I like it a lot. And um, if you like a gray, if you're trying to pair it with a gray pen. I think it. Uh, I think it works really well. You're definitely picking up some shading. Uh, on this uh, Tamari River paper, which uh, is always welcome and looks kind of nice. Again, the shading and what have you will be very much nib and paper, uh, uh, paper dependent. Um, so you have to, all three things kind of have to, kind of have to mesh together properly to, um, to, uh, to get the shading. In any case, I think that'll just about do it for this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching it. If you're not a subscriber, would like to humbly suggest that maybe you want to become one give us a thumbs up or two leave a comment they're always welcome and until we see each other again have a great day bye bye